Hello and good afternoon. Here is another little Titan session. Today it's about triggers, how they are defined and what the difference is between trigger type item and trigger type hardware. What you see here is um, Titan SPC suite. Um, actually, I'm using SACN triggers um, so that the software outputs something which triggers the software as well. Um, it's just for the ease of you of uh, making a video so that I have my virtual failures here. These one, they, so they we have four, four, uh, four playbacks here, which are for these four demo channels. And... Um, they trigger something. Um, it would be the same thing like you use a MIDI keyboard or a MIDI fader wing or whatever, or another DMX um, board or something. Yeah. So um, if you only see on the, through these four um, demo channels here, they are controlled with those virtual faders, and they do something. You see it here. So I programmed um, two more um, playbacks here for my main um, fixtures here, for my main sports or whatever it is. So we have something on playback page one, which is this one. So it's Q5, you see it here. And I have put in there um, two of the fixtures and we have on page two, we have the other two. So that's why um, my first cue is triggering those. You see it here, it's going um, purple. So that's why it is on here. Yeah, so this is um, triggered. So the first fixture here is triggering the fader here, which is this one. And the second one is this one. You see it is triggered, albeit it's, we are not on the page two, it's page two here, you see? Yeah, so we are not on that page, but the trigger works. Q3 and four are a little bit different. Have a look, Q3 works. Um, Q4 works as well, but if we now change the page, um, they work on the first playback as well. So um, they work always on fader number one, regardless which page we are on. And um, the other two cues, Q1 and Q2, um, work on a designated queue. So Q1 triggers Q5 and Q2 triggers um, Q6, which is on page two at the moment. Now we can try something else. We move something, move the Q6 to another place and have a look. Q6 was triggered by Q2. Two and have a look, it still works. We can try to move it to another page. Um, move, and now we change page. Now, first select this one, now we change page somewhere else. We now we are on page seven, Q9, and it still works. So this is the main difference. And now I'm going to show you how this works. As always, new show. Now we do a little bit setting up our what we need here. So we patch a couple of demos, patch some demos like one, two, three and four, and we have some other demos which we only need for um, triggering, like so. Okay, then I change something because I want to have those on 
um, line 10, um, patch, um, repatch fixtures, we want to repatch those and change them to DMX line 10, address 1, so that they are really out of the way, and repatch. Okay, 10, 1, 2, 3, and 4. These are our trigger channels. Okay, then next exit. Now we open our workspace window for virtual faders. Here we go, virtual faders. Now we program our trigger thingy thingies like um, 5 at 4 and record here and clear 6 at full record um, here and there clear 7 at full record and here yeah, this is done by keyboard clear and 8 at full and record it here okay and now we can shuffle the windows a little bit like so and now we change this one here okay um, remember those are triggers we could name it like that like set legend and call this trigger 1 trigger one uh, you get the idea like set legend and does this trick two then set legend and only change this one and call this trigger four okay and finally open capture to see something capture visualizer here we go um, again we shuffle it around a bit and we open our um, capture settings here we go and this goes here because I want to change the brightness of the ambient lighting. Okay, now we program some playbacks like this and add four and record and put it here. And now the next one is on page two. So three and four. Add full and record here. Okay, these are all really live playbacks. Okay, so on page one we have the first two fixtures here, and on page two, same playback. Uh, this doesn't work because I wasn't at zero. Now I am at zero, and now it is Q6, which has the other two fixtures. Don't mess it with the other ones. We can uh, make them invisible. If we go to visualize and put them away, 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 away. Z position. Now they are away. We are behind the wall, basically. <laughs> okay. But it still works. So. Now we define our triggers. Go to system, system triggers. At uh, again, we shuffle it around like so. Now we add a new trigger mapping. Call it self triggers. And now we add a trigger. We add a trigger for our Q1. And 
I start with a trigger type item. In order to trigger an item, we have to select the item which is the programmed um, playback there. So I cannot use the fader uh, because it, it still asks for which item to trigger. So I have to hit either the swap or the flash button. So as soon as I click on swap, I have it identified here, so it is going to trigger Q number five. Yeah, this is what we need. So we have to uh, Q uh, trigger Q number five and set this to trigger type item. Okay, and now I had set it earlier, so that's why I can trigger it through SICN on Universe 10. Um, Auto learn is on. So we can see if this works, it does, and it automatically detects that it is um, address number one. But you could do the same thing, exactly the same thing with uh, a MIDI fader board or whatever. So we add this one. Okay, and we can read it here. So um, this is the source, SACN, Universe 10, Channel 1 triggers Q number five and sets the level. Then now we can have a look into our menu section and it asks for the next item to trigger. So we toggle to key, page number two and select Q number six again by the buttons. Okay, and now um, it has um, identified that we want to trigger Q number six. And we do the same thing like trigger type item, action set level. We could use some other actions like refired level or something, but set level is a good starting point. So, okay, again, now we have to change our level on the channel which we want to use for triggering, like address two. This is again the uh, um, DMX spoiler, so no problem. Again, address two and add. Okay, now we have our two things here. Um, we can bring them down. Then we want to uh, try the other way around. And I want to set another trigger like the first Q, but as hardware. Um, we toggle trigger type to hardware. And now I have a look here as soon as I change something there. So either I click on the blue button, it says, now we want to trigger the hardware um, button playbacks swap one, or button playbacks flash one, or fader playbacks one. So right now I'm triggering the fader. And okay, again, it asks me for the uh, stimulus. And now I use my third one, trigger three. And it has detected as its universe 10 address three. Okay, and I can add this to our trigger mapping. And here you see how it, what, what's the difference. So my stimulus 10.1 triggers Q5, stimulus 10.2 triggers Q6, stimulus 10.3 triggers hardware fader level playbacks one. And now we go to the next page. But in order to do this, we have to exit the menu. Only now I can um, trigger, um, I can select the next page. Now I'm on page number two, you see it here, you see it here. Okay, and we have Q number six, and now we try the same thing. Go to triggers, add another trigger here. And again, we want to trigger hardware, again the fader, now for Q number six. Okay, and you see here, even though it's now on page number two and Q6 and not page number one and Q5, 
it is still playback number one. So it is just the first fader, regardless what is programmed on there. So we hit OK. And now we set our stimulus, which is number four. It has detected it, address six, uh, address four. And we add this. And now you see the problem here. Um, that uh, our two last triggers, 10.3 and 10.4, go to the same target, which is the Playbix fader number one. And now, finally, we see how it works. Um, we exit all the menus. Um, Let's have a look if we can make the window appear, just to have a look. Um, even though we are not in the trigger menu, let's have a look if we can see the triggers. Here we go. And we put it up there. Um, I shuffle it a little bit, like... Don't need so many space, so much space for the faders, and um, put this here. Now we can read it. So okay, um, let's bring down everything. So everything is at zero. This is at zero. Now yes, okay. Now we are set up, and we are only going to try what's going on. So our first trigger. This one here um, is 10.1 and should set level of Q5. Bring it up, okay? And this is exactly what it does, okay? Our second level is Q number six, which is on the second page. Bring it up, bring it on, perfect, it works. Hey, let's have a look if fader, uh, if our trigger one still works on Q5, which is on the page one, which is not available at the moment. It does. Okay, this is interesting. And now let's have a look on our hardware triggers. This one works. So. Hardware trigger, this is 10.3, this one here, for Playbacks Fader 1, okay, and our last one does the same thing, albeit we have to find it on another page. Uh, so again, hardware triggers the very fader, regardless what's programmed there, and item triggers what is programmed there, regardless where it actually is. And now, finally, we try the same thing I showed you in the intro. We just copy this somewhere else. And to my mind, this should even work if we put it on the virtual faders. Let's have a look. So, move our Q5, this one, and put it there. Now we have Q5 here. And this one, we can try the same thing. Move um, here, Q6, put it there. Exit all menus. Let's have a look if the cues themselves work. Yeah, they work. And this works as well. And now let's have a look. Q5 works. Q6 works. Hey, cool. And these ones will bring up the faders, but they are empty. So they do work, but there's nothing on the faders. Uh, so now we could try something else. We could program another playback on the fader here. Um, record. Um, no, first bring it at full. And now we record it here and clear, and exit. And now we can try what's going on there. And uh, 
Ah, uh, this is again our <laughs> DMX spoiler. Uh, so, uh, again, we try what's going on here. This is empty. This is not empty. These are our um, uh, fixtures we have programmed. So, so this is what I wanted to show you. So, usually you would want to define trigger type item. This is only possible if you have programmed something and you need to select what is programmed and you the, do this with the swap or flash button. This is what I wanted to show you and have fun and talk soon.